Most hotel Wi-Fi captive portal solution integrates with the hotel PMS system so that the guests can log into the Wi-Fi using their room number and the last name seamlessly. Traditionally, this requires the captive portal solution to integrate with the hotel PMS using their API, but many PMS charge very high licensing costs for using their API. So in this lab, we're going to show how we can use a free option to integrate with literally any PMS system because most of the PMS PMS system software supports a feature to periodically export out the guest checking in and out info into an external FTP server. So that means whenever guests come in and out, so the PMS will periodically, let's say every five minutes, export out the guest info into the FTP server. Then our gateway will go to the same FTP server to grab that record and insert the respective field into our local authentication database for Wi-Fi capture portal authentication. It's as good as a direct integration with the PMS system and the user experience is completely seamless. So we're going to show how we can do this very easily using our built-in free feature, which doesn't cost any extra licensing cost. First, we go to the user management. You go to the import and export, use the auto import PMS option. So before we can import the user data into our system, because different PMS software may have different data formats. So what we do is we will need to have a seed file. So the seed file basically normally will look something like this. It will choose the guest name, first name, last name, their ID, email, depends. Some PMS does capture this info, sometimes they don't. But most minimum, they will have their last name, their room number, because whenever the guest check in, they will be assigned with the room number and also the checkout date. So the checkout date to us will be the expiry date. So with the seed file, we basically, we will have that initial map into our database. So the field separator, you just use auto detect and the CSV header. Uh, you just say first row as a header because in our sample CSV data, the first row has header. And uh, you can optionally attach to an access control profile. That means whoever guess that is being imported in, you can apply an access control profile controlling their speed and time and all that. So let's say I just map CSV. Automatically, all the field from the CSV will be shown here. Then we can map them, the, each respective column to our database field. So for example, first name and last name. Normally, the last name will be used as the Wi-Fi password. When we log into the capture portal, we will say this maps to the password. And email, optional, you can choose not to have them if, if these are not important. And we have ID info as well. Room number is normally the username for logging to the Wi-Fi capture portal. So we'll say this is the username. You can have different fields to map to the username and password. So basically when the guest log in, in this case, the username is the room number and the Wi-Fi password is mapped to the last name. So check-in date, I don't need it because I'm only concerned about the expiry date and checkout date. Just be careful with the checkout date format. Sometimes they have different PMS. Sometimes they may have a slash here instead of a dash, or sometimes they may have the year in front. So in this particular sample, we're going to have date with dash. So it will be date, month, year. We're going to map this to the expiry date when we create those accounts. And the phone number, I, I don't need it. So we just save the change. So the mapping is done. That means when we pull the CSV file from the FTP, which is periodically updated and exported out from the PMS, we get the latest CSV from that FTP and we'll map each field into our database and the accounts will be automatically added or updated. So we'll define the FTP settings. So we put the FTP server and username and password. And this will be the same as what PMS uses to export out the guest info. And you can set it interval by minute, how many minutes that you want to export or import. So let's say the other side is five minutes or 10 minutes. On our side, which is five or 10 minutes. So once you set an FTP server connection, you do a testing and it's successful. Then we will enable downloads. Then the system will periodically go to pull that latest FTP file from the FTP server. So just bear in mind, when we export out the guest info from the PMS, the file name is always following this exact name here because the FTP server will be putting the same name. We'll be looking for the same file on the FTP server and import it into our system. If you use a different name, we will not be able to retrieve that file and there will be no user data created. For now, we have already enabled the FTP setting, enable download, and also have mapped the CSV field into our database field. And all we have to do now is just wait for the data to come in.
Now the accounts are imported. So we basically have this username as that room number and the password is their last name or first name, whichever we have configured to map to. So I'm just going to check, double verify this with the FTP record. So if we pull the file from the FTP server and open it up, and those are the last name here and respective room number. So I have about 18 records here. So it's 18 records here. So we're just going to do a test to make sure this is exactly expected outcome. I'm going to show my phone here. So once you connect to the Wi-Fi, assuming you're a guest and you start browsing and some phone will automatically prompt you. So just let's say that's my room number and the password is the immediately I'm logged in and if you go to the user session, you can actually see the user has logged in as well. And if you check the status of the guest, connection is good. And similarly, if you want to verify some other info about the user for the imported data, you can actually also see the email of the user and also the ID has been imported as well from the PMS. So that's it. Very simple and it's free, no licensing costs and the user experience is very seamless as well.